Welcome to this Final Cut Pro tutorial for beginners. This is going to be a complete crash course in video editing, so you can learn everything that you need to start making amazing videos, whether it's YouTube videos, travel vlogs, or anything you can think of, we got you covered. This is Eduard Stinga from Videoplasty, and let's get started. Alright, welcome to Final Cut Pro. If this is the first time you are opening Final Cut Pro, it might look a tiny bit confusing at first, but don't worry, it's actually super easy and uh, intuitive to use. So just to show you the interface real quick, here on the top left we have what is called the browser, which is where we will import our media, browse our projects and uh, some titles and generators. Here on the bottom is basically the heart of any video editing software. It's going to be the timeline. You're going to see that in a minute. Here in the middle, we have the preview area for the video that we edited or imported. And the here on the top right is what is called the inspector. Right now, it looks kind of empty. So let's go ahead and import some media. But before we do that, you have to understand the hierarchy of how uh, Final Cut Pro imports footage and organizes everything. So first of all, you have what is called a library and uh, you can create a new library by going here or use the one that already exists. And inside each library, you can create what is called an event. So let's go ahead and create a new event called Final Cut Pro Tutorial. And now inside this event, this is where we can actually import some media and create a project inside it. So first of all, let's go ahead and create the project. So I'll just call it Final Cut Pro Project. Uh, it's going to be saved inside this event. And for the settings, just go ahead with a 1080p. That's more than enough. Frame rate, this is up to you depending on your project. For this, I'm going to use 24 frames. That's usually good. And everything else, just leave it as it is. So now we have the Final Cut Pro Project inside this event right here. And the way you use events is pretty flexible. It's up to you. For me, I use the event for the entire video and all the footage that I have for that video. But maybe you're working on a longer video like a film, for example. And then you can use events to organize the different scenes and assets that you have for each one. So now let's go ahead and import some of the media. You can do that either by going here and import or right clicking here and uh, importing media. And if you go here, it's going to show you the media import window with a lot of settings when you import footage. And uh, one that you want to make sure you have is leave files in place, because if you have it selected on copy to library, it's basically going to make a duplicate of the same footage that you're importing. And that's going to just use a lot more space and you don't want that. And if you're going to work with 4K footage, it's a very good idea to select this thing called create proxy media which is basically going to downscale and use a lower resolution version so you have better performance while editing. But personally, I never use this and uh, nobody that I know actually does. What we always use is we have a folder here opened in Finder and uh, I already have my footage selected and organized like this. So it's just a matter of selecting all of it and then drag and drop it here in the Final Cut Pro event. And now we have our footage and uh, music here imported. And there's two ways that we can view this. Uh, it's either a list form or a film strip like this. But personally, I prefer to use the list view. So if I click on either one of those, as you can see, it opens a video preview right here. And uh, if you want to preview the video, you can hit the space bar to play or pause the video right there. You can also preview it by clicking here to see different points inside the video. And this is the area where you can trim the video before you add it to the timeline. And to do that, you can either grab it here at the beginning or at the end. Or what I actually use all the time is if you play it back and you decide you want it to start here, you can insert what is called an endpoint. You can hit the keyboard shortcut I to mark an endpoint. And then if you continue playing it and um, decide this is where you want it to end, you can mark out by uh, hitting the keyboard shortcut O. And now we have this selection right here and it's time to add it to our timeline. And there are a few ways to do that by using those buttons right here or using keyboard shortcuts. 
The one that I actually use most of the times is this one, which is a keyboard shortcut E, which basically stands for adding the clip at the end of the timeline. Now I've added a couple of other clips on the timeline so I can show you the other ways to add your footage. The other options are to just add it wherever the playhead is by using the Q key on the keyboard and it's just going to add it as B-roll right here on top on a secondary channel. Or maybe you just want to split this and add this selection here in the middle. You can use this shortcut which is W on your keyboard and it's going to add it here in between that and split it in half. Or maybe you just want to add it here and uh, just override whatever is at the playhead. You can do that as well by uh, hitting the letter D on the keyboard. All right, now it's time to add the music as well, which we have here, and I'll just add it here on the bottom. And another way to trim audio or video on the timeline is to just grab it directly here at the end, because for example, we can notice that the audio doesn't really start until this point, so this is just silence. And uh, you can grab it here, and if you move it like this, it's going to remove that silence and now we can move it all the way to the beginning. And for example, you can do the exact same thing with the videos. If you grab it here at the end, you can see it selects the one on the left or if you do this, it's going to select the clip on the right. But we want to trim this one on the left and just match it, for example, here with a bit of the music. And then for the boat, I want to actually extend it a little bit until here because it's going to match the beat of the music here. So that's another way to trim your content. But keep in mind, if you make it shorter like this, it's pretty much removing everything that comes after it. All right, now it's time to show you some of the tools that we have here. And the most basic ones that we are going to use are select, position and the blade. So the one that we have right now, it's called select with a keyboard shortcut of A. And in this case, if you just grab any sort of footage like this and move it here, everything else is going to snap into place and you'll never have any empty spots on your timeline. But say for example, you actually want to add another clip in here and uh, have this as an empty space temporarily. In order to do that, then you move to the position, which is keyboard shortcut of P. So now if I move this here or anywhere, it's not going to snap everything back into place. And now we actually have this empty space from second two till like six second or something like that, where we can come in later and add whatever we want. And the last tool that I want to show you is the blade, which is a keyboard shortcut of B. And you can use the blade. As you can see, it has a blade icon that's going to cut uh, whatever clip or music you want. So let's just say we want to cut the music here. And then with the keyboard shortcut A, I'm going to select this and you can move it around like this. Or what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to hit the delete key and it's going to remove it. So now we can go here and actually play back our current edit to see how it feels. Alright, I think we managed to match it with the music pretty well, but the problem that I notice now is that the music just ends abruptly. And in order to fix that, you can grab it here at the end. You can see the cursor just turns into those left and right arrows. You can just grab that to create a curve like this and it's going to add a very nice fade out at the end. And uh, let's say, for example, maybe you want to make the music louder. You can also grab it here on this white line and increase the volume a tiny bit like that by a few decibels. Or you can do the exact same thing to lower the volume on the entire track. So I want to show you a couple more useful shortcuts in Final Cut Pro. Say, for example, you want to remove this part of the timeline because you don't like it. If you hit a backspace key, the next clip is just going to snap in and uh, fill in the gap. But maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want to remove this clip and uh, have that part empty. And in order to do that, you need to use the keyboard shortcut function plus delete and it's going to remove it. But now we have all this space here for us to use later. Another useful keyboard shortcut is if you want to duplicate this clip or title or any sort of thing that you have on the timeline, 
You can do so by holding down the Alt key and moving the clip wherever you want. And now it just created another duplicate. For example, when you have a lot of things on the timeline, it's very useful to be able to zoom in and zoom out on the timeline. If you have a trackpad, then you can definitely do that, but I don't currently have one. So the keyboard shortcut for that is Command plus or Command minus like this to zoom out or to zoom in so you can actually see a bit better what is going on. And of course, if you have a very long project, you're going to have a lot of footage. Right now, we only have around 10, 15 seconds. So we're going to zoom in so we can better see what we're doing. So if you want to adjust the speed of a clip, you need to have it selected like this with the yellow border on top. And you can either go here and click show retime editor, or you can use the keyboard shortcut command R. And we have this thing on top now that shows us the speed, which is at normal 100%. And if you grab it here at the end, you can either make it faster like this at 200%, which is basically going to be half the time. Or if you want to make it in slow motion, for example, you can do this at 50% um, speed, which is basically going to make it twice as long. In Final Cut Pro, you can also record a voiceover if you want to do a narration of your video, whether it's a documentary or a travel video like this or anything in general. And to do that, you go here to Window and click Record Voiceover. And you have a few settings here, but the most important one is that you want your input to be on the microphone that you're using. And if you record a voiceover, make sure you use an external microphone and uh, not the microphone that comes with your MacBook or iMac. And to start recording, all you have to do is click this uh, red button right here and it's going to start recording exactly at the playhead where it was initially. And as you can see, it's adding the voiceover here on the bottom. Adding transitions in Final Cut Pro is incredibly easy. The way to do that is you go here and click this button to show the transition browser and Final Cut Pro comes with a lot of existing transitions that are super easy to add. If you want to preview and see how it looks, all you have to do is move your mouse on top of it like this to see a preview of it. In our case, I'll just use a classic transition, which is a cross dissolve like this. You can use it anywhere and it's impossible to go wrong with it. So to add a transition, all you have to do is drag and drop it like this and you can add it in between clips like this. Or for example, maybe you want to add a dissolve at the end, in which case you can just add it at the end of the clip. If you grab the transition like this, you can control the length of it to make it shorter or longer. Next, I want to show you how you can add effects in Final Cut Pro. And to do that, you click on this icon right here, which is going to open the effects tab. And as you can imagine, there are a ton of effects that you can use. So I'll start by showing you the audio effects. So for example, the audio effect that I'm going to show you is here in the spaces category, which basically simulates the audio coming from a different space. And uh, the easiest one to check is actually the cathedral. And to add an effect is the same as a transition. You drag and drop it on the audio file. And now if I click on the audio file and go here on the inspector, and scroll down a little, I can actually see the cathedral effect here. And to make it even more obvious, I'm going to increase the amount to something higher. And uh, now let's preview and see how it sounds. Now, it doesn't really work very well for this travel video, but you can actually hear the music coming from a different space. In this case, uh, something that resembles a cathedral uh, and has those exact same acoustics. Next, I want to show you some video effects. And as before, there are a lot of different effects. But the one that I want to show you so you can get an idea of how to use those is under Stylize. And if you go here on the bottom, it's actually called Vignette. It's a super classic one like this. It just makes the whole image a lot nicer. As with everything else in Final Cut Pro, you drag and drop it on the clip like this. And now if you go here on uh, the Inspector tab, you can actually control some of the settings, but first you got to click on this button show to expand the controls. And here you can control the vignette properties to make it less dark or darker, adjust the size. And depending on the effect, you're going to have a lot of different controls here. All right. So now I want to show you the rest of the inspector panel. 
If I minimize this uh, vignette tab right here, I can go on to the next one that I want to show you, which is the transform tab. Here you can change some very basic properties like the position to move it right or left, horizontally or vertically as well. You can also rotate the footage like this. And more importantly, you can also zoom in and then change everything else as well to reach the desired transformation of your footage. If you want to reset any of those properties, you can just click on this button right here and it's going to reset everything. All right, next I want to show you how you can use keyframes in Final Cut Pro. This is just a basic introduction as keyframes are a bit of an advanced topic. And what keyframes are, they're basically a way to control any of those properties and how they change over time. So the one that you might find yourself using pretty often is changing the volume over time. And for example, if I just change the volume here by using the volume meter in the inspector, it's going to change the volume for the entire thing. But that's not what we want. Let's say, for example, maybe we want to change the volume and lower it only on the duration of this clip right here. And to do that, we need to add what is called a keyframe. And you can add a keyframe by using this icon right here. And as you can see, it added a keyframe here on the timeline on the music. Now, if I use the arrow keys to move further down a bit like this, I can add another keyframe there. So for this keyframe, I'm actually going to change the value of the volume property to say minus 10. And as you can see here on the timeline as well, the waveform is a bit lower. But now, when the whole thing ends, it's time to bring it back up. So we need to add another keyframe here with the value of minus 10. Then if we move further to the right by using the arrow key like this, I can add a, another keyframe here with the value of zero. So this is really useful. For example, maybe you have a bit of a voice over here and you want the music to be a bit softer in the background so you can clearly hear the voice and what it's saying. So you can use keyframes for pretty much any sort of property that you find here in the inspector panel. You can change the position, rotation, basically pretty much anything that has this icon, you can add keyframes to it and change the value of that property over time. Adding titles in Final Cut Pro is incredibly easy. And the way to do that is you go here on this icon that says T on it, and it's going to show you the titles and other generators. And you can explore all of those things because Final Cut Pro comes with a lot of pre-made elements that you can use. But for now, I'll just show you some very basic titles. And uh, let's say we want to use this one right here with the blur. As you can see, if I move my mouse on top of either one of those, it's going to show me a preview of how that title looks like. So I'll just use this one called a blur. And I can add it here on top of this video, or maybe I want to add it in the beginning, and this is gonna make it on a black background. But I don't want it to be on a black background, I just wanna add it on top of this video right here in the beginning. And same with anything else in Final Cut Pro, you can grab it at the end to make it shorter like this, exactly the same length as this video. And if I click on it and go back to the inspector, I have a couple of settings here that I can change. Maybe I want to remove the start animation or the in animation, which is basically the blur, change the font, or also play around with the duration of the in and the out animation. Next, if I go to this icon right here, I can actually change the text. And let's say Greece holiday 2020. Uh, let me change the font to something a bit nicer. And I can also move it around in a better position by using those controls here. So let's have a look and see how that feels. All right, that works pretty good. And I think the positioning was pretty good here as well. Of course, if you go here, you can also change the color. Maybe you want to make it red or yellow or whatever works for you. But in our case, I think white worked pretty well. 
And when it's all said and done, it's time to export the video. And as with anything Apple related, the way to do that is by clicking this button that looks like a share button for um, any of your other devices. And the one that I use all the time is I export as a master file on your computer. Here you can add a bit of metadata like description, creator and tags. Next, move to the settings tab and uh, for format, you definitely want to have video and audio. For codec, Apple ProRes 422 is pretty much going to do the job most of the times. Or you can also use H.264, that's pretty popular. Here on the bottom right, you can see an estimate of how big your file is going to be after it finishes exporting. And when you're ready to export, just click the next button and it's going to ask you where you want to save this on your computer. And now it pretty much exports in the background, which you can see the progress of right here on this icon. It's going to load all the way to 100%. But you can minimize that and if you want, you can keep editing or move on to another project. All right, that's all for this Final Cut Pro tutorial. I hope you learned a lot about video editing. If you did, make sure to leave a comment below this video and hit the like button because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm and this way I can keep making more videos like this. If you want to see more video tutorials and more content about video marketing, make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. This was Eduard Stinga from Videoplasty. Make sure to add me on Instagram as well to keep in touch and I'll see you in the next video.